Hello and welcome back. This time we want to talk about the static behavior of our measurement system. Okay. Therefore, I just want to to uh, repeat what what a measuring system is. Yeah. We said a measuring system consists of something which is called the sensor. Yeah. I now make a little symbol inside the sensor, which is usually symbolizing a sensor. This should be a Wheatstone bridge. What this is, we will, we will know. We'll get to know this. Yeah. We said, okay, there is this our measurement, our physical measurement size yeah so this is this is what is coming inside so this is the this is the physical physical part i call it xi for input okay so this is the input this is the input xi uh well, the autofocus seems to have some some problems there. I will simply continue and hope this is getting better, because what was next? What was next was simply this amplifier, and the amplifier has also a symbol. I'm sure you know. It looks a little bit like a play button, and we said. The signal is coming to the amplifier and the amplifier might have some power supply for the sensor. And then at the end we do have some display. There we go with our signal. To the display or to the processing unit, data storage, or whatever, and I will simply make here a pointer. Yeah. And out of this, in the end, the outcome is the displayed value. Yeah. That's the out outcome yeah. display. And I call it XO for output. Okay, that's the output. I will simply shorten this now, so this will be transferred to one block, yeah. one big block. That's now the measurement system. measurement system there is an input of course that's this xi and there's an output the displayed value that's this xo I can have to apologize for the auto autofocus. Let's see how long this is taking. Uh, now we come. I simply put my hands there. Then it should work better. Yeah, good. Uh, then I uh, we come to the thing which we call static behavior. The static behavior is the relationship between the input and the output. So which input produces which output? That's the question. Okay. The static behavior can be described by the help of some curve. So I will draw it here now. This curve. D 
this is the output value XO and this is the input value XI okay input value output value here we have somewhere a maximum value maximum input value there's the minimum input value and of course there is somewhere a maximum output value XO max yeah and the relationship between between the input and the output value can be described by some by some curve yeah? I make now simply some curve so this curve gives for every input value a displayed value okay an ideal curve of course would be linear yeah so the double size of the input value should be double size of the of the output value of the displayed value that would be ideal okay how the autofocus also managed to do it so if we do have here a value input value it will result in a display value determined by the curve XO1 okay. here at this point if I have a small change I now write it do it a little bit in extreme if I have a small change this should be a small change then I have a second display value okay and here I have some delta input and here I have some delta output if those things are really 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 small then then we end up with the target at this point okay A tangent target tangent yeah and the tangent has some steepness okay what does it mean the steepness the steepness means if it's very steep so in this part of the of the curve here up here then the tangent would be very steep what does it mean a small change in the input value would already produce a big change in the output value okay if it's not that steep like in this area here yeah then the same change in the input value would result in a smaller change of the output value yeah so this means in a in a steep area yeah this line has more so-called sensitivity okay empfindlichkeit in german sensitivity flat lines does have less sensitivity the output is not so sensible about the input sensitivity yeah. so this is sensitivity or in German it's Empfindlichkeit and the formula I write now the German version E for Empfindlichkeit is delta XO divided by delta XY XI so the change of the output divided by the change of the input okay. this is nothing more than the steepness yeah. so because 
if delta xo goes to zero, yeah, this delta xo to delta xi will get the tangents of alpha. Yeah. to durch angkadete tangents. Okay. So the steepness of the line is is uh, the sensitivity, cause of sensitivity. This is one key parameter. This is one key parameter of the of the static behavior. Good. Uh, I said before. Okay. Uh, Linear curve would be the best. Yeah, would be would be the best. This is what we want. Uh, in reality, a lot of sensors or a lot of measurement systems does not have linear curve. Especially sensors are often not that linear. So there are several possibilities of dealing with this. Yeah, one possibility. One possibility is like here. If I'm not using the whole curve, let's say this is the curve for, I don't know, this, this brightness sensor, and I only want to measure the brightness from here to here. So I will only use a small part, a small part. Yeah, This is my range I want to use. Yeah. Then I could simply say, okay, this is my usual working point here. This is my usual working point. And I will substitute my real, real line yeah, with a linear approximation. This one. The tangent through the working point. Simply use this. Then I will make here some error and here some error. Yeah. But the errors are compared very small. And so I can live with this. Yeah. That would be, we well, simply use a replacement, curve replacement. Yeah. That would be one possibility. Difficult will be if I want to use a wider range. Yeah. Wider range. Uh, so, for instance, maybe, maybe for instance, uh, we talked about this. <coughs> I'm sorry. We talked about this. Uh, uh, temperature sensors with the with the changing changing resistance values about the temperature. We will get to know in a later video that one very common material for this is platinum. Platinum is used because this curve is very linear and we can substitute it with a with a linear curve with a linear line okay this is why platin is used however the efficiency or the sensitivity of platin is rather low so that's the curve is rather flat there are materials out there which are steeper in curve so the sensitivity is higher what is basically good however they are not that linear. Yeah, they look really curvy. Yeah, and of course I want to measure a wide temperature range. Yeah, if I have this situation, I may have to divide my working area into several, into several sub ranges, into several things. Define everywhere. A working point and make tangents one after the other yeah? and try to substitute try to substitute this working range one working range two working range three and so on in every working range with its own substitution okay so these segments, these segments may be, may be in, to get more accurate results, you have to introduce more segments. 
and each segment has an offset and a steepness. And for each segment you can define a, a linear equation, simply. Okay. So this would be d2, and here we have k2, and the, the curve of this line would then be tangent 2 equals k2 multiplied by xi plus t2. And if I'm changing, then I will use this 3 and so on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is the static behavior. Okay. Static behavior. Uh, why is it called static? Because this line only is valid if this input value is there long enough. Yeah? If the input value is there long enough, then you get this output value. Yeah? If it's changing to another input value, then the output value would not immediately change to the output value. It will stay the same and then change to the output value. So you will leave the curve temporarily. What is fast, what is slow, yeah? how fast the input value may change, that the output value can follow. This is the topic of our next video. Okay? This is the topic of, of uh, the dynamic behavior of the measurement system. This we will cover in our next video. But before, I want to show you three different types three different types of, of, of curves. Yeah. Hopefully the autofocus now can manage very fast because I will simply draw here this is again the input value, this is the dispute value or the output value here is the maximum measurement range in this case and here is the maximum output range yeah. and even max x o max and then autofocus should already find something yes it's stable okay so ideal what would we consider ideal from our right now knowledge is to have some line which is very linear through it. Yeah? So that's, that's a line through 0, 0. Okay, I will write line number 1. Yeah? And line number 1 is, is curve. through zero, 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 zero line. Yeah? And the output value is the, is the steepness multiplied by the input value. Very simple. Okay. There might also be a curve which looks like this. What does this mean? Yeah. So here I do have an offset this is a two is a curve with suppressed zero. Suppressed zero. And the output is the steepness and then of course minus d2. Steepness multiplied by the input minus d2. So 
basically, if the measurement is in the lower range, so from here to here, nothing will be displayed. This place below zero will not be done. So here, xi2 min is the minimum value that would be displayed. Yeah? And starting from here, the display would grow yeah? from zero to the maximum. What does it mean? For instance, if I'm not interested in the lower part. Usually, we have such a curve without noticing, without really noticing, because usually we don't take, for instance, temperature measurement. Usually we don't measure from absolute zero. Yeah, We measure from minus 30 degrees Celsius or something like this, which is already 240 Kelvin. Okay, so this would be 240 and this would be, I don't know, 300 and then there's this measurement range. Yeah, so this curve we often have without really noticing. Okay, or if we have, I don't know, the sea level of a, of a lake, of a mountain lake, I'm not interested if the sea level, the sea level is maybe from, I don't know, 700 meters above sea level to 750 meters above sea level and what is below 700 meters I am not interested because then my lake would be entirely empty and there is the ground already okay so for these parts this type of, of curve is is okay like I said often we are not even we are not even considering this or or somehow notice it and even if we use it. The great advantage of course is that in this area, in the displayed area, the sensitivity is higher because the steepness is higher simply. Okay. And then there is also one thing which might look strange on first sight. Yeah. This is a curve like this. Curve number three. Yeah. Here, uh, here we have already some displayed value, even if no measured value is there. D three. So this curve, this curve, is called curve with living zero. Living zero. Yeah leaving a null punkt. Then the output is K3 multiplied by Xi plus T3. Okay. What is this good for? I mean, it's first talked about sensitivity and so on. What's, what's the deal here? Okay. The deal here is simply that this output value yeah, which is there, yeah, might be used, for instance, for power supply, or might be used to check the cables. Yeah. If I plug all my things together and do not get at least this value, but zero, yeah, I know ooh, there must be somewhere, must be somewhere, something must be wrong. Yeah, we have to check the cables. Is there a wire break or something like this? If I'm getting this value, even if nothing is there, then I know, okay, I get at least I get a signal. So that's good for signal check. A typical, a typical signal for this is as 4 to 20 milliampere signal. Yeah? So this is 4 milliampere, this is 20 milliampere, and this is the lowest measurement, and this is the highest measurement. For, in for instance, a pressure sensor from 0 to 10 bars might have 4 to 20 milliampere output. 4 milliampere is 0 bars, 20 milliampere is 10 bars. As an example. Yeah. Another possibility often used is 10 to a uh, 2 to 10 volt. Yeah. Then this 4 milliampere, the 2 volts here, can even be used to power supply the sensor. Okay and to check the cables. This one here, 
I will mark it and I will mention it several times. That's the signal. Let's call it. Most of our measurement signals are these signals. Yeah? 4 to 20 milliampere signal. That's the signal. Current signal. We will get to know what's the big advantage of it. And now one advantage we know already, the 4 milliampere check, cable check. Yeah? Immediately, if the cable gets loose, I check it immediately. Hey, there is something wrong with this measurement. I don't, don't rely on this measurement. Okay. Or power supply, the actor. But also here, in these curves, these are only the static curves. Yeah? And like I said, if the input is changing, then let's say we have curve numbered 1 now. The input is here. Yeah? And the input changes to this value. Yeah? Then the real is starting here. And we will start to change. And after time, we will get to this point. And how long time it needs to get to this point. Yeah? And how much the deviation is. If it might look like this. Yeah? Or maybe like this. Yeah. depends on how fast this change is happening yeah. or maybe it even looks like like this that we go up here woo, 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 and here we swing a little bit yeah. what is fast what is slow yeah. this is part of our next video yeah. then we will talk about the uh, dynamic behavior where exactly those things are are mentioned yeah, or covered because this determines also how fast how fast the signals may change and I can still measure. So that's topic of the of the dynamic behavior. But for now these lines and curves with the sensitivity and this uh, approximation with linear and also these different types of curve principle basic this is the static behavior of measurement system and for this i say thank you for listening and here next time with the dynamic behavior and goodbye